All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take a few things off the top end now. I've got the coolant drained out and didn't make too bad a mess in the floor. So um, first thing I want to do is pull these push pins out of this air box here and loosen the clamp up here at the um, where the intake ties into the actual head. And that will let us slide that air box back and give us a little more room so we can get the head off. Uh, also, while I'm here, I'm going to loosen up these valve covers. I'm probably going to set the thing at top dead center. It just makes it easier when we put it back together if we're just having to do the top end on this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull those off. And while I'm here, loosen up these two 12 millimeter bolts on the header and loosen up this uh, clamp on this radiator hose just to get everything off the top end. So let me get all that knocked out. I'll cut the camera back on and get it done. All right, guys, I got the header bolts loose here. Uh, in order to get this header off, this is a one-piece pipe on this bike. So uh, you have to um, take this whole thing loose, muffler and all. The muffler just held on with some little little grommets here. Uh, but you do want to unhook the um, O2 sensor. Fuel line just went a little wild on me there. But unhook the O2 sensor, which is right here. Uh, just squeeze those two little ears together on that fitting, I mean on that connector, and uh, it will let the wire loose. Tough to do with one. Hand, there you go, just like that. And then take your oxygen sensor, squeeze that little tab right there, and your sensor will come loose. And now wiggle this uh, exhaust forward. Probably going to have to get back there and really do some good wiggling on this because it's in there pretty good. Um, one other thing I want to do while I'm up here on the top end is uh, take these two 12 millimeter um, bolts out here on the top motor mount. You don't have to completely remove this motor mount on, on these bikes. Just take those bolts out and that will uh, open it up so you can get the whole head off. Alright, uh, let me get that off and get this exhaust off. It might be a little labor intensive to get it off, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll get those off cut the camera back on. All right, got the exhaust off. Uh, about the easiest thing to do with it, I sprayed a little bit of lubricant on those uh, little nipples that hold it on and took a rubber hammer and hit the very end of it and it slid right out of there uh, pretty easy. Then you just rotate it up and it'll slide out the back without taking any of the other plastic off. All right, next thing we need to do is put this thing at top dead center just to make sure. So I may end up having to do a bottom end on it, but uh, hopefully I won't. But if we just do the top end, putting it at top dead center now will make it a whole lot easier. Um, what we got to do to get that is um, we have to remove this plug here. The Allen head, I think it's 5 millimeter, And then these three bolts back here where the pull start would normally go. Three 10 millimeter bolts. About the easiest thing to do on those is uh, air ratchet. And a, and a 10 millimeter gets those off pretty quick and that way we can turn the crankshaft so uh, let me get these off and we'll get this thing set up top dead center alright guys I got the uh, pull start cover off back there um, it's uh, uh, three 10 millimeter bolts like I said before this uh, allen head bolt here was actually a 6 millimeter I think I mentioned 5 earlier but it's 6 so now what you got is a uh, the nut sticking out right there that's off the end of the, uh, our bolt sticking off the end of the crankshaft there. So it's a 17 millimeter. So just put a ratchet on there and you're gonna wanna rotate this thing clockwise. And what you wanna do is as you rotate this around is check to see when this, uh, this is your intake valve here. Check to see when it moves down, which is opens, which is starting to move now. It'll move down and then come back up right there. That's closed. And so now start looking in this hole here for a tick mark, a mark that's actually engraved, I'm sorry, in the, um, in the flywheel. Uh, most of the time on these Hondas, it'll be, there'll be two tick marks with nothing written on them. Then there'll be a mark that has a, a tick mark with an F and then a tick mark with a T. And the F is when it fires, the T is the top dead center. So that's what we're looking for. Just rotate this thing around real easy. I hear the motor making some kind of noises up there. Oh, I think I just saw one of them. Yep, right there at the T mark. Okay, so there is the 
mark with the F on it. Let me see if I can show you this. And I bet you can't see that. I'm not really sure the best way to even get a light down in there so that you can see the mark. It needs to be lit up a little bit, but not too much. I'm not sure if you can see it. This uh, LED light looks like it's doing crazy stuff with the camera too. But anyway, there's an F mark, and then right above it is a T mark. There's a little dash right below the T. And what you're wanting to line that up with, I don't know if you can see that or not. You guys, you just have to take my word for it. There's a little notch right here. You want to line that little line below the T up with that notch. And one way to check that it's that top dead center is you should have some play in both your valves. And here that one. Got a little bit in that back one. It's not a, I think that might be some of our issue. So it's, that's, that's top dead center, but we've got something going on with the head. But All right, so we got that in. Uh, next thing I need to do is uh, slide this intake boot back. Might need a bigger screwdriver than this. But I've got the clamp loose. So we need to slide that back just a little bit so we get it off, the, off of the actual head. And we we'll grab a little bigger screwdriver for that. And then we also need to remove this coolant line that goes into the bottom of the thermostat housing. Uh, and that will be, if we get that off, that will free everything up on this cylinder and head so we can get it off. So let me get those off and get me a bigger screwdriver to pry this boot off. And then we'll start taking these uh, these bolts off of this valve cover here. So, all right, I'll cut the camera back on in a second. All right, got a boot slid back, got the coolant line off. Now we're gonna take these bolts out of the, I call this the valve cover, but it's a, uh, I guess rocker arm holder or something with the actual valve covers of these here. And the bolts you need to take off, or actually you take all of these bolts off with the exception of these two. They hold the um, rocker arms in so you don't have to worry. You can take them off, it doesn't really matter, but uh, you don't have to take these two out. So that's, that'll leave you with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts you need to take out. So I'll get those loosened up and we'll get that, uh, get that cover off. Alright guys, got all the bolts out. Um, see if I can wiggle this thing off here. Sometimes you have to have a screwdriver to kind of ease it up a little bit. A couple little pry points around it. One right here on the very top. It's got a couple dowels in it that will also um, kind of hold it down. Goodness gracious, there we go. Just got to keep working with it. All right, nothing looks wrong here. These are your push, push rods. Pull them out. Grab a rag and wipe them off. And stick them in our parts box. All right, grab the other push rod. Uh, your gasket here. Now we've got the head here. I'll tell you something something looks like it's going on with one of these valves here. We'll see here in just a minute when we get in there to it. But uh, just from me looking at it here, I don't know if you can see it from that camera angle, but the intake valve, this intake valve here is stuck up. Appears to be stuck up a little higher than this one for some reason. So uh, I'm thinking you got a valve issue. But what we're gonna do now is take the bolts out of the head. You've got 14 millimeters, these acorn looking uh, 14s here, and then the two regular looking bolts here, nuts, I'm sorry. Uh, all these have washers on them, and then there's a 12 millimeter bolt down in here you gotta take out too. I usually just take those off for the impact. Um, so let me run those off real quick, and I'll cut the camera back on right before I pull it off. All right, guys, got the, um, all the nuts off of it, washers and all that too. Uh, hopefully this one's not gonna be quite as hard to get off as the other one was, as far as being stuck on a, a dowel. So, 
wiggle this thing back and forth a little bit, it kind of breaks loose. Still need to move that air box back just a little bit. Alright. There's our head. Let me turn this thing over over the oil pan because it's got some oil in it. Well, it don't really look too bad as far as the valves go there. They definitely been looks like burning some oil. They're uh, crusted up pretty good. You can see there. Um, they look a little rough. So now need to take the cylinder out. The only thing left to do to get it out is there's two 10 millimeter bolts at the front up here that hold the cylinder to the crankcase. Uh, so we'll have to take those out and then the cylinder will just lift up. Let's see if I can get those with this pack. I'll have to get an extension for the other one. Of those out. Stick them in my cardboard and see if we can wiggle this thing up. Still got a little bit of coolant left in it. So let me tilt it, get over here to the uh, drain pan to pour all this out. terribly bad. Let me see what the crank feels like. What you want to check on here is make sure that this crankshaft doesn't have any play in it up and down. You actually can hear it. So that's not good. Um, and if you feel down, it doesn't matter side to side. I see some people wobbling these things back and forth. They'll all move side to side. But you want to uh, to feel for play up and down. And this one here has some. And what, what that ends up doing is letting the um, piston kind of wobble around in the cylinder hole. You can hear it right there. Feels like it's got play in both the uh, wrist pin and the um, and the cr crank. So I believe this thing's gonna need a crankshaft. But what I need to do is uh, slide this wrist pin out and see how much wear is on it, because it feels like there's a whole bunch of wear on the wrist pin. I really can't see the crank. I mean the rod moving up and down. So I'll get that piston out of there and see how much play it actually has in it. Uh, if it's got any, I usually recommend replacing these things. So uh, we'll see see what the owner says. Uh, these rings, uh, one one way to check those is to slide them in the cylinder. This is the top ring here. Uh, just slide them in there kind of square down just a little ways and look for the gap. And the gap on this thing is supposed to be like six thousandths. And you can see there's a um, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or something gap in there. So the rings definitely have some wear on them. Um, so I'll check that rod. If the um, if it does have a good bit of play in it, we'll look at replacing the whole crank and boring this thing out too. So uh, all right, guys. What I'm gonna do now is take this piston out. Um, we're going to probably end up having to split the case on this thing anyway, but so it really don't matter that much. But uh, these snap rings tend to fly all over the place. 
and I don't really want it to fall down in the motor so I stuck a rag in there and you want to catch that snap ring with a, just a uh, um, pick there's a little indention in the side of the piston I can show it to you once I get it out but you catch that snap ring I mean catch that pick under that snap ring right in that indention and you can pull the snap ring out and then you want to push the um, piston pin out like that and as you can see here the discoloration you actually can feel the wear in that in that piston pin it's got a good bit of wear on it see it's been run kind of hot um, the indention I was talking about putting the uh, putting your punt or your pick in is right here you stick it in there and pry that out I can't get the wrist pin to go back in there now well I guess I can leave it out alright so uh, what we got now is just the rod sticking in here and you grab this rod and pick up on it up and down straight and uh, it shouldn't have any play in it actually it's got very very little play which is pretty amazing so another thing you can do I'm thinking this might just need to top in another thing you can do naturally the wear on this piston pin is mostly in this center section is stick this pin right here to check to see if you got play in your um, in your small end of your rod stick that pin through there but don't stick it all the way to the center where it, that pins definitely got some wear on it and then try to move it up and down um, it's got very little play if any up and down so it looks like this piston pin is worn way out so we may end up being able to get away with doing a top end I'll uh, I'll get in touch with the owner and see what he says we may go top end on it or we may do the whole thing so uh, it's about too late to be calling anybody right now so I'm gonna call it quits for tonight and uh, we'll pick this one up later alright guys back on this uh, Formula 500 uh, after looking through everything uh, it appears that um, most of the plate that was in the crankshaft coming from the uh, wrist pin and uh, the rod and the crank is actually good in this thing so we're going to end up just doing a top end on it um, kind of expecting to do that from the get go but I wasn't sure once I got it apart and it did have some play in the piston but uh, I believe all that play came from the like I said wrist pin and um, and the rod didn't have any play in it so what we're going to do now is um, change these valve seals out I've done this in another video but figured if we're doing a top end we'll just do the complete thing so uh, what I like to do first is tap these uh, these little washer that are on top of the uh, the valves here kind of break them loose and then I use a valve spring compressor uh, looks a lot like this big old c-clamp looking thing it works great um, I think you can rent these things from like auto parts stores which may be your best option if you're just gonna do this once in a blue moon I uh, ended up buying this one because um, uh, I do this a pretty good bit so uh, let me show you how it works you just clamp it around here this is actually set up for some 420 ones I did not too long ago so um, it should work about right for these 500 uh, you just press this thing down actually you can you can snap it all the way down until it um, until it locks out but I'm not gonna do that because I can get these retainers off or I think I can get these retainers off just by my hand and we don't have to um, snap it down there you go you got two little retainers they're um, little wedge shaped pieces of metal that hold the valve in there uh, valve spring I'm sorry and the valve for that matter so then you open this thing up and uh, that is the intake valve I like to try to keep these together the little washer on the top the springs I'm not sure what difference it makes but a lot of times these springs are oriented a certain way most of the time the uh, you have a closer gap in the bottom of the coils than you do on the top I don't know what difference that makes but I like to put them back in the same way and then you can just push the valve out with your finger uh, this one's pretty clean I'm still gonna take a, um, 
um, wire brush and go around it just to knock off any carbon and I'm also going to lap it um, I'm, these valves uh, I don't think they're bent or anything but uh, just putting rings in it I mean putting um, valve seals in it I am going to lap these things just to make sure you get a good seat uh, let me grab my lapping compound and my little uh, tool and uh, I'll cut the camera back on when I get everything set up to lap it alright what I do to lap these valves uh, get the valve here I have some uh, valve grinding compound here it's made by um, Permatex it's like a almost like a jelly like stuff that's uh, got some grit in it uh, I think it's water based stuff so it wipes up cleans up pretty easy but you just want to put a little bit around your uh, your uh, seat and surface of your valve slide it back in your in the valve guide and I've got this little tool here this is also comes from a parts store but um, it's just a metal handle with a, I mean a wooden handle with a suction cup on the end and it will suction to the top of these valves some people will take a, a drill and just um, grab the stem of the valve and run the, run the drill for a minute pulling in and out on it um, I don't know, I, I just seems like a lot of trouble. This little uh, suction cup thing works pretty dang good. So that's what I've always used. So just do that a few times. Um, you can see the grinding compounds still on here. Just take a rag and wipe that off. Wipe it off of your seat and surface. And what I like to do is look at this to see if you have any spots where it's not uniform. You don't it doesn't have that uniform lip all the way around and that means normally that you have a, a bent valve or something's going on with your seat but uh, this one looks uniform all the way around so that one's good uh, so now what we're going to want to do is replace the valve seal valve seals on the top side here uh, you can take a screwdriver and just prop on that thing it's got a little metal um, uh, kind of metal uh, skirt around the bottom of it sorry metal skirt around the bottom of it there um, just pry that up I got the new ones here uh, from Honda there's your part number if you need it 12208MBB003 and uh, just take these things and all you have to do is just press it back down on here you can just do it with your hand till it snaps make sure it goes on there all the way and then Reassemble it. That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, this these intake valves are are normally not very dirty. Don't have a whole lot of carbon buildup. And the exhaust valves a different story. They'll uh, they'll be caked up pretty good, especially if the bike's been burning much oil. So um, I'll have to clean it probably a little bit better. Let's see if I can get this in the camera. Clean it a little bit better than I did that. Uh, or a little bit more than I did the uh, intake valve it's already clean so press this thing down till you get your valve stem stuck up a little bit and these little uh, retainers they've got a, a skinny taper on one end and it's fatter on the on the top side make sure the skinny side goes in first and got a little ridge around the inside of it and that's what locks on the top of the uh, valve uh, stem and as it pulls up, as this spring pushes against it, it actually holds tighter on the valve. And that's actually what uh, what holds the valve in, holds the spring down, and all that. So um, just flip around, do the uh, do the exhaust side. So this this little C clamp tool makes it makes it real easy and goes pretty quick. So you get the retainers out for the exhaust side just like that let your pressure off on it get your spring off I was just going to show you this intake or exhaust valve it's not it's not that bad it's, it's got some little, little bit of crud on it but it's not too bad so let me get it cleaned up get it back together and then I'll uh, start the video up when I get ready to put the cylinder back on the bike Alright guys, just as in normal fashion with me putting stuff together, um, we got to looking at this valve and it's actually got a burnt valve on the uh, exhaust, so I'm going to have to get one of these things ordered. Um, I'm not sure if I can show you this, because my camera is not the best in the world, but uh, 
let me see here you can see that little notch there actually I think you can see it better when I didn't have it uh, so close but you can see that little little notch in the valve um, that's actually a spot where it either chipped off got hot um, I don't know but it's right on the seat seating surface and that would not let your compression be what it should be if it would even um, if the compression would even come up so we're gonna have to replace that valve um, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and stick the piston in and uh, I'm gonna have to um, get another valve I don't know I may have one that I could pull out of an old head I got but I'll have to check and see if these are the same as like a 420 head uh, if not we'll just order a new one and uh, get it shipped here and start another day on this uh, this little top end job so all right, let me get the uh, camera set up. I'll show you how to put the uh, piston in this thing. And that's probably going to be all we can do tonight. All right, guys, I finally got the uh, 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 extra valve for this 500. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stick the rest of this motor back together. All right, so now uh, next thing we need to do after I got our, got our valves done is um, get the piston on here. The piston is here. It actually has a... a stamp on it here that says IN that's for the intake so that needs to face the intake side which is toward the back of the bike uh, where, you, where your throttle body is um, I've already got one of your um, snap rings in the piston on the back side there it's a lot easier to install with it out of the bike so I've already got the one on that side now I'm going to install the one on the front side um, whatever you put these things in you want to make sure you shove something down into the case hole because sometimes those uh those things will go flying and you don't want to have to go chase that around so i'm going to um I'm gonna go ahead and put this ring in here works best if you start at the bottom the bottom of your hole over here with the ring and uh slide the top side in there once you get the bottom started the way the piston shaped it helps it helps you if you go that go that route so get the bottom end of it started into your little groove there I ain't got my I ain't got the pin pushed all the way in yet ring won't ever go in with the without the pin all the way in all right so there it's all the way in now what I like to do is get the bottom started and kind of stick your thumb in the middle of that uh snap ring to kind of hold it and then just press the top top in and it kind of works its way around just want to make sure it goes in the snap and the groove all the way around I like to like to spin it on in the groove just a little bit to make sure that it's seated in there good there you go it spun right around all right uh, next thing I need to do is Looks like there's a chunk of something down in the hole there. Let me get that out. But uh, next thing we need to do is put the rings on. And the way I do these rings is uh, here's our box of rings here. First one to go on is this funny looking ring. It's the uh, oil ring. It's kind of uh, wavy looking ring. It goes in the very bottom slot. And what, what I like to try to do with it is to make the gap, the key here is to not let any of these gaps line up. So I make the gap on that one face the front of the bike. All right, the next next ring to go in will it be these smaller, very, very small rings. Uh, they go on top and bottom of that uh, wavy shaped ring we just put in. And what I like to do with them there again trying not to uh, to let these things line up is to put one gap one of the ring gaps on at about right here and one of the ring gaps about right here Let's go ahead and install the second one it doesn't really matter whether you go where you go with which one be at the top one or the bottom one 
So you got one of those rings that goes on the top of that little wavy, wavy ring, and the other one goes on the bottom. All right, next ring that goes in will be the middle ring. It's the darker colored ring. They have a they have something stamped on them. Usually, this has got an RN and a 25 for it being a quarter of a millimeter over. Make sure those letters face up. And uh, I'm gonna go back over here. We do have a ring between the gaps, so this one's going to um, be facing back toward the front of the bike. The ring gap, and just stretch these things out just enough to get over the piston. Because if you go too far. I have seen people break them before. All right, and then the last ring is uh, is this one here. It's got a R stamped on it as well as a 25. It's got kind of a light ring around the outside of it. Um, we're going to face that toward the back or toward the uh, toward the intake on this, and that goes in the very top ring. So that's how our very top slot. So that's how your rings go in there. Um, so the next thing to go in will be your, uh, for one thing, your gasket, your base gasket here. It has a, a RO in this case stamped on it. Sometimes they say up, but that's the, the writing on it faces up. I usually just try to wipe that thing down to get, get the oil off of it. So slide it on there. There's also two dowels that, um, they're still in the crankcase here. You want to put or you want to keep those in there on the bottom side it helps keep your ring lined up if they happen to come out in your uh, cylinder when you pulled your cylinder out you want to um, just make sure that you uh, hang on to them so that um, it keeps from getting your um, gasket pinched when you go to put it on all right let me get the uh, cylinder ready to slide back on here and then I'll cut the camera back on all right guys got the rings in there uh, ready to go down with the cylinder. Um, I also put this base gasket in here. I don't know if I did that before I cut the camera off all ago. But there's a base gasket, back gasket, and two dowels um, on these two back head bolts. So uh, make sure those go in there, and that keeps your gasket from getting pinched. Also put just a light coat of oil on this cylinder before I slide it down on there. Now we're going to slide it down. Uh, kind of keep it going down square. And uh, I take a small screwdriver and press in on that um, on those rings. I had a small screwdriver to use, and uh, I don't know, maybe I ate it since the last. Oh, there it is, dropping on the floor. Okay, so the top ring is stuck out, as you can see here. You can just take that screwdriver and press it in, and. Um, it actually helps if you have two hands to do this, or not two hands, two people. Um, and that way you can hold the ring in on one side and hold it on the other side at the same time to keep it going down on there. Um, <coughs> the top ring's already in. So now I'll start on the bottom one. I usually just take and tap this. You don't want to force it down because you can pinch those rings. Just tap it with my hand on the top side. Most of the time that's enough enough to get it to slide down on there. Like that. Well, it popped in on the front side but popped out on the back. Alright, let me check over on the other side. Make sure it's going down good. sideways press in on the uh, on the ring rotate the piston around a little bit there we go I got got the top and the bottom one looks like the oil ring starting to go up in there I don't think it's all the way down yet just catch the screwdriver right at the base of that cylinder and see if you can feel the ring I don't feel one there. So sometimes you can rock this cylinder back and forth a little as you, as you ease it down onto the piston. I think it's still 
catching on the front side up here a little. back and forth sometimes that'll make them make them seat up in there check the other side takes a little bit of patience the last thing you want to do is uh is force this thing down because uh you can bend those rings pretty easy especially those ones on the oil rings um it don't take much at all to bend those These cylinders here don't have a whole lot of taper on them either. Some of the um, some of them have a have a little bit of a lip on the bottom side that will help you get these rings all lined up. But these ones here for the 500s and 420s, new body style ones, they don't have that. Yeah, let me check that ring on that side one more time. So that makes them. Tends to make them a little more difficult. Keep working with it. wobbling it back and forth and just like that it slides in there it's a pretty tight fit so uh, it takes a little bit to get it all lined up in there right this cylinder will slide right down on here the problem I've got here is this snorkel is kind of in the way so it's not letting me go down on there real square there it is So press it down, it lines up on your dowels, and uh, that was it. So just keep tapping that thing easy around in a circle, rock the cylinder back and forth, and you can get those uh, get the rings to go in there. All right, next thing we need to do is put these two 10 millimeter bolts in at the top up here on the cylinder. Um, grab the head gasket, two dowels that go in here, and we'll bolt the head on. All right, guys. Got everything over here. I think that I'm gonna need to put all this back together. Um, the first thing to put in are these two dowels. Well, like I said, I put the two eight millimeter bolts in up there, but there's two dowels that go in here. Uh, then next, we need to put on our um, head gasket. This gasket um, is the one that came off here. So I'm using uh, some copper seal on it to make sure this thing seals up. It's a metal gasket and they're pretty tough so all right stick slide that on there like that and then i've cleaned up the uh the cylinder here we know we did the valves in it earlier and um it just slides right on here on top of your head studs and we'll have to slide this in um intake air air box back just a hair get everything slide down on here I didn't remove it. Probably should have. There we go. We'll end up sliding this boot on about the same time I get the head all the way down on here. It's also hitting the exhaust. But there it goes. Almost all the way down on there. There you go. Pretty close. 
All right, now you need to put your uh, your nuts and bolt back in there. You've got a bolt, 12 millimeter bolt goes in the center there. And these nuts and washers, I just put the clean washers on the inside, as well as the um, open headed nuts go on the inside. Like that right there. And then the dirty washers go on the outside. And the acorn nuts go on there. And then take and torque these things down. Torque spec calls for 20, 29 foot pounds. Uh, what I'm going to do is put them on at 10, torque them again at 20, and then finally torque them at the 29, and uh, do a crisscross pattern just so you get it uh, tightened down on there the same amount all the way. And then I'll uh, just tighten that center bolt down. Pretty sure it doesn't give you a torque spec, it just says tighten it down. So torquing the, tighten the 14 millimeters down first, and then we'll jump on that 12 millimeter. Just snug it down good, and then we'll be ready to bolt the exhaust and the and the um, intake boot back on. All right, I'll cut the camera back on once I get all these tightened up. I'm not gonna bore you with this. All right, guys, got all the um, head bolts and everything tied on here. Uh, also went ahead and tightened up this um, intake clamp. I just had a screwdriver here handy, so. Uh, next thing we need to do is slide this exhaust on. The exhaust, um, got to get it lined up in the back back here. There's some uh, two little pins that you have to line it up on here. And uh, there's one under here too, under the bottom there. So make sure both of those line up and they slide back through. It doesn't hurt to put a little bit of lube on here. Some a uh, liquid wrench or something like that just to get it to slide on uh, so do that and we'll get it you got to kind of slide it in those and keep it lined up out here all at the same time so it's a little bit of a collaborative effort to get it all in there but it will go and uh, so I'm gonna get those nuts put on there as well as the bolts put in the top motor mount and I'll cut the camera back on in a sec all right guys, got the exhaust in here now. That uh, lube on those two little nipples under the bottom side there really helps to slide that thing in there. Um, also, a couple other little things you got to do is um, hook this um, oxygen sensor back up. Yeah, well, I don't know if you unhooked it or not, but I unhooked it when I slid the exhaust out just to keep from ripping the wires out of it. Uh, one other thing to do is hook the, this, uh, water line up on the bottom of this uh, of the thermostat housing there oh, slide that on I got grab me a, uh, a wrench to tighten that up I'll cut the camera back on in a sec all right guys now it's time to put the, uh, the push rods in and the gasket for this top I guess you call this a rocker arm cover because it's not the valve cover um, this this gasket goes on a certain way you have to have a hole here for this uh, oil passage and I did put both of those dials back in there that helps to center up the whole gasket uh, then take your uh, push rods and they slide right in here um, they actually kind of have a little cradle in the uh, gasket there to help hold them so stick both of those in there just like that and then your push rod holder here. Uh, just wipe the baking surface off. Things actually pretty clean. I like to hold up on these um, rocker arms. Uh, I think I call that push rod holder, but this is actually a rocker arm. What I call the rocker arm holder. I like to hold up on those. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but that's just what I do. Hold up on them as you um, as you're pushing this thing down. Okay. All right, got that down. I'm gonna stick all these bolts back in here, and um, I'll get ready to uh, set it to top dead center and adjust the valves. I'll cut the camera back on when I get the bolts tightened up. All right, guys. Now we're gonna do the valves on this thing. I'm gonna come over here on this uh, right side and make sure it's still at top dead center. Uh, I don't know if you can see the hole in there, but or see the line in there, but there is a line in there that 
Let's see if I can shine a little bit of light on it. A little a line on there that's got a T marked on it. And it lines up with this little notch in the case here. So we're still at top dead center. Um, so now we get these uh, valves adjusted. The This bike here calls for two different clearances on the um, on the intake as opposed to exhaust valve uh, calls for um, uh, point zero zero six uh, which is what is that twenty point two three I'm sorry point one five millimeters on the intake and point two three millimeters on the exhaust so a little bit fatter on the exhaust um, that's six thousandths and nine thousandths. Uh, so that's the wrong one. This is a um, this is a six thousandths, and you remember we replaced this exhaust valve. I mean intake valve. So naturally, it's going to be tight because this thing was adjusted, or the valves were not too far out of adjustment when I got it. So uh, naturally, it's going to be tight because it's got a brand new valve in it. So loosen this um, lock nut up a little bit so that you can turn that center adjuster nut uh, I'd usually just take a small screwdriver uh, flathead screwdriver stick the feeler gauge in there till you get just a little resistance on it I like to set these things a little on the tight side because in my experience with putting them back together like this um, they usually loosen up just about as soon as you crank them up. So we're gonna set it on the little on the tight side just to make sure we got plenty of uh, so we we'll, so we won't have too much clearance once it uh if it does loosen up when we crank it. Naturally, this side's got a little bit more play in it because this was still the original valve in the in, uh, exhaust side. So just uh, loosen that lock nut, spin that adjuster down till you get a little clearance. And I like to um, hold that center center adjuster while you're tightening the lock nut. Sometimes it can spin the whole thing and if you hold it, it keeps you from having that happen. And I could go just a hair bit tighter on that one. feels good. So now we're going to stick the uh, actual valve covers back on 24 millimeter just to snug these things down. You ain't really got to torque them down because I've seen people rip the threads off of them before. And they're really really getting them tight in there and they don't have to be that tight. You just snug them up and that'll be enough to keep them from leaking. Uh, also have to replace or put the uh, Pull start cover, whatever you want to call this, back on. Uh, took it off to get it at top dead center. A um, couple little things. Um, actually, let me get this put back on, tighten these valve covers up. I'll slide the gas tank in here, show you how to do all that. Uh, still got to hook this um, uh, coolant hose up right here. And let me uh, let me do these. That's gonna take me a minute, so I'll uh, I'll cut the camera back on right before I get the gas tank in here, and I'll show, try to show you guys a, a first start up on this thing. All right, guys, got the uh, top radiator hose back in there. Yours probably gonna look a little bit different than that because uh, this is a, a radiator relocate, and that's not the factory hose. So uh, next thing you need to do is slide this um, uh, plastic cover in here. Thing kind of slides toward the back has these little notches it goes into and then you slide it forward to kind of lock it in it takes a little bit of wiggling around just like that and then this uh this little black plastic piece needs to go in there as well as the bottom part down there has a a little notch it catches on just like that Push all this down. And let's 
slide it up forward a little bit. So we got to get two of these dial, I mean two of these push pins, a push pin here and a push pin here. I don't know if you can see that top location. Right here and here. That's what you really got to get lined up. Um, this thing just needs to slide forward. So just wiggle it around until you get those lined up. Find the push pins for it. So you stick those in. Uh, hopefully I can get a couple of them here pretty quick. That front one still needs to slide forward some. Slide your pin in there. With the help of a screwdriver, get it a little, a little closer to lined up. Like that. And then do the same thing with this bottom one down here. This old four wheeler's had kind of a rough life, so these things don't line up quite like they should. I can halfway understand it. But it sure ain't won't line up in there. Oh, I see why. Pieces kicked in there. There it is. It was caught right here by the back of that plastic piece. So get your pin lined in there. Still ain't want to go down. Goodness gracious, it's not supposed to be this hard. Not supposed to be this hard. There it is. Alright, so you got your piece pushed all pushed down all the way. Um other thing we need to do is this this line right here comes off of uh, off of our cluster here. It plugs into this top coolant sensor. I like to go ahead and hook it up because it gets a little tight in there with the um, with the um, gas tank on. It plugs in right there on the top of the motor. You have to have that thing plugged in, or pretty sure it won't crank. Don't ask me how I know how. All right, so now. Slide the gas tank on here. Take the lid off. It's the easiest way to get it to slide in here. Lift up on it a little. Put the plastic out just a little. You want to make sure that thing goes into the uh, onto the top of your bracket that's in there that you that your bolts got have to bolt into. Because sometimes it will slide over. Uh, slide under the bracket and that's not what you want you'll never get the bolts in there if you have the bracket on the on the top well you can get the bolts in there they just won't do anything all right so now I'm going to uh, get those bolt holes line or the bolts lined up up here in the top and get this camera come off the mount I'll show you get the bolts in here I can't even show you there's a hole down in there that's where we got to go get the two bolts in there and uh, I can go ahead and hook up this fuel line had it shoved back here in the back the easiest, easiest thing to do with it is to take this little clip off and stick it back in your in your connector like that and then just take and slide it on till it snaps like that this does have a vent line this is it there again this is a run up for the snorkel so your vent line is going to be run a little different way so that's how that goes you lay that um we'll need to lay that 
all this stuff over here over once I get the gas tank in and hook the spark plug up and I'm going to drain the oil out and change the oil and filter and we'll be ready to crank this thing up here in just a second. So let me get the gas tank bolted down. I'll get the oil draining and um, got the camera back on right before I put all the electronics back on. Alright guys, got all the uh, plastic back on here. Put the bolt back in the top there and the um, ran the spark plug wire around here and pretty much it got the oil put some oil in the in the crankcase as well as a new oil filter and uh, we're gonna see if we can get this thing to fire up um, got a uh, act like it's not getting a connection here I need to check the battery. Maybe it's not getting a connection. All right, let me figure out what's going on with that. And I'll uh, cut the camera back on in a second. Well, guys, figured that out. That thing's barely hooked in there. So uh, let me tighten that up. And uh, we'll see if we can't get this thing to crank up. Hit that with the impact real quick. All right, got that tight. So, prime it up just a little bit. Got the switch cut on. There you go. That's what you want it to do. Fire right up. I don't have any coolant in it yet, so I gotta put some coolant in. I'm not gonna let it run long. And I still got to fix something over here on this tire. So, uh, but other than that, that motor's done. All right, guys, well, I appreciate you guys checking out my video. Check out my others. I keep, a, I put a couple links up for uh, for some new stuff I'm, I'm uploading. And uh, probably the next one I'm gonna do will be a, a 500 Foreman uh, older body style uh, assembly video and uh, I'll have it up here in the next few days. Alright, appreciate you guys checking it out. Have a good night.